If you're a frequent viewer to the channel, you might have had the privilege or the torture, depending on how you look at it, to watch me kind of design multiple ground mounting solutions for a portable carbon fiber mask known as the LD6 from HRD Industries. I think that the cool thing is though, in this episode, we're gonna build another ground mount, but it's a further development of all those ideas, the ones we found and the ones we built, kind of put together for the, what I think is the ultimate solution currently, for the LD6 portable carbon fiber mast. Instead of just going over all these boring details, let's just jump into things so you could see how easy it would be for you to build your own. In my area, Schedule 40 PVC pipe is very common to find, and I went to the local hardware store where I got a two foot section of Schedule 40 three quarter inch PVC pipe for a whopping $2.65 plus tax. Let's just call it $3. With that, I figure I can make about three different spikes. Furthermore, at your local hardware store, there usually are buckets of spare or little pieces of leftover PVC that sometimes you can get for super cheap. If you are making this for a portable mask that's not the Little Dude 6, hey, I'm cool with that. But what I gotta tell you is you just wanna make sure that that piece of PVC could fit into the mast after the mast is extended. And one thing you might have just noticed is this was actually mounted on a picnic bench and we are making a ground mount. What gives? Well, the cool thing about what I'm showing you today is it's universal because of these threads that I made on this device. I'll show you in just a minute. But you could take it off of, uh, say, the ground spike that it's in and you could put it on a super clamp if you need to mount it on a picnic bench. Utilizing Fusion 360, I designed two parts, and those two parts will make up three components that will go over the PVC, two end caps and a center cap. Both the end caps are the same design, meaning both of the sides will accept an M10 threaded spike, much like you'd see on the JPC-12. That's a nine and a half inch spike, which will give you plenty of room to dig into the ground. Now, if you're gonna use this out in the field, you might wanna make sure that it's gonna be durable and hold up. And we have to run things through torture tests in order to confirm that they will hold up. And one of the things I heard about 3D printing recently is if you throw it against a rock, it may break. If you throw a lot of things against rocks, they may break. However, I went ahead and I ran this torture test anyway, and my results were wonderful. It should be pointed out that the weakest part appears to be the threaded M10 stud, which in the future, I might just fill it up with epoxy or maybe even add an insert into the cap. There are epoxies out there that are focused on adhering aluminum or aluminum to polycarbonate. I'm not gonna worry about that today. And realistically, we should use a two-part epoxy in order to adhere the polycarbonate to the PVC. I'm not gonna worry about that today. Instead, I'm gonna use super glue because it's everywhere. Everybody has access to it. It's probably in your countertop and really, I think it was enough for this use case. Time will tell. If you want a really good surface for that super glue to adhere to, go ahead and sand down a little bit of the PVC. This will help give some kind of texture or surface for the super glue to adhere to. And then of course I put the super glue on the PVC, being very mindful of where my hands were positioned. <laughs> I super glued my hands together multiple times. Earlier today, I mentioned it, but I will mention it one more time. When I got that two foot piece of PVC, I cut it into thirds, meaning eight inches for each piece of PVC. However, I have tested this with about 11 inches of PVC and it works just fine. I was just trying to conserve space. And here you see me melting on the cap to the PVC. And that's because when I cut the PVC, I didn't utilize the right tool and it was a very dirty cut. It's a great time to let the super glue dry and subscribe to Ham Radio Dude. And when that super glue is dry, then you could once again, make sure that the thread works for your ground spike and then go test it out, super simple. Finally, I went out to the field where I was able to test both the picnic bench mount as well as the ground mount with my little dude six or the LD six. And I got to tell you that everything went just fine. I utilized 65 feet of wire in a sloper configuration and fed half wave and I didn't seem to have any issues. However, I do want to note that there was no wind. It was nearly a perfect day, and I had no way to, to create wind. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would like to conclude today's episode with two thoughts. Number one, I really didn't talk about price, but I will say that it cost about $10 to build this whole thing. The spike being about five, about a eight inch section of PVC would be about a buck. 
And then each of these pieces of PVC, a total of $3. And I say $3 because it's not just the material cost, which polycarbonate is more, but it's also the electricity to print these things. Regardless, for under $10, you get a pretty heavy duty spike. And I think that that's cool. In the future, if I ever did have to add an M10 thread onto here, like an inserted one, it would be a whole whopping dollar more. And even then, that's like $11 for something this durable. I really highly recommend that if you have some kind of mast, you build one of these at home. I'll post the parts on thingiverse.com as well as printables.com. They'll be linked below. But if you need one custom made or designed for your mast, that's where I would be willing to change the dimensions in my computer aided design software and send it to you for non-commercial use. Thanks for watching the channel. I really do hope that this video brought you value and I hope you have a good one. Take care.